they were never meant to find it. Buried beneath layers of forgotten ruins, hidden for over 4,000 years, a fragment of bone, small, unremarkable, would ignite a storm that science was not prepared to face. Deep in the heart of the Indian subcontinent, a region already brimming with ancient mysteries, one discovery would defy not only history books, but cultural beliefs, national narratives, and genetic science itself. What began as a routine excavation soon spiraled into something far more dangerous. A strand of DNA extracted under strict secrecy revealed something so shocking, so utterly forbidden, that several institutions tried to suppress the findings. Because this DNA didn't match anything previously recorded, it told of an origin no one expected, an ancestry wiped clean from collective memory, deliberately or by time. How could one tiny fragment of genetic code challenge the origin story of one of humanity's oldest civilizations? And why was it hidden for so long? Today, we uncover the truth behind the forbidden ancient DNA and reveal the shocking origins of India's true past. For centuries, the origin of India's civilization has fascinated and divided scholars. At the heart of it lies the Indus Valley Civilization, one of the world's oldest urban cultures, emerging around 3300 BCE. Cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa thrived with complex infrastructure, standardized weights, and a script still undeciphered. Yet, despite its sophistication, the true ancestry of these ancient people has remained elusive. British colonial theories once pushed the Aryan invasion hypothesis, suggesting nomadic tribes swept down from Central Asia, displacing indigenous cultures. Later, Indian scholars countered with the out-of-India theory, asserting a native genesis. But neither side had concrete genetic proof until now. Across the vast plains of the Saraswati River Basin, long considered mythical, archaeologists unearthed skeletal remains older than the Rigveda itself. These remains, forgotten under layers of silt and political tension, carried secrets embedded in their DNA. Why did no one analyze them before? Why were the samples kept away from international labs for decades? What lies hidden in this ancient genetic material that could shake the very foundation of Indian identity? It started with a drought. In 2016, an unusually dry monsoon season revealed outlines of buried structures near the village of Rakegari in Haryana, India. The site had long been suspected to be part of the ancient Indus network, but what researchers found next exceeded all expectations. As excavation deepened, they uncovered a well-preserved burial site, a female skeleton lying in a mud-brick chamber, untouched for nearly 4,500 years. Unlike earlier finds, this one was different. The bones were intact, the surroundings undisturbed. But it wasn't the skeleton alone that sparked global attention. It was what she carried within her. A team of Indian archaeologists, along with South Korean and Harvard scientists, quietly extracted a molar from the skull. Why a tooth? Because it's a fortress of genetic information, sealed and resilient, often holding uncorrupted ancient DNA. No announcement was made, no press, just silent courier transfers to ultra-secure labs. What were they expecting to find? Ancestry connected to early Indo-Europeans? A genetic bridge between Mesopotamia and South Asia? Instead, what they uncovered was something far more unsettling and entirely unexpected. The investigation was conducted under a veil of silence. At the Reich Lab at Harvard University, one of the world's leading centers for ancient DNA analysis, Top geneticists began decoding the genome of the Rakigari woman, but almost immediately they faced resistance, delays, missing paperwork, unexpected bureaucratic barriers. Even within academic circles, 
whispers began circulating. This DNA could reignite cultural wars. The deeper the team went, the clearer it became. They weren't just sequencing a genome. They were unearthing a political and historical time bomb. The Indian government, wary of sparking controversy, tried to keep the results classified. Some officials feared the findings might contradict long-held national narratives about the indigenous roots of Indian civilization. Others worried the DNA might support colonial-era theories best left in the past. Yet the scientists persisted. Using next-generation sequencing and mitochondrial analysis, they painstakingly reconstructed the woman's entire genome. Then came the breakthrough. Her DNA didn't match any known Central Asian or steppe ancestry. There were no markers of the so-called Aryan migrants. Instead, her genetic signature pointed to an entirely local population, one that had lived in the region for tens of thousands of years. What did this mean for the Aryan invasion theory? And why was this revelation so dangerous? The data was irrefutable. The Rakigari woman carried no steppe ancestry, a genetic marker considered essential to the Aryan migration theory. Her genome showed strong continuity with pre-Harappan agriculturalists and even older populations linked to the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers of South Asia. This wasn't just an isolated case. Cross-referencing with DNA samples from Mergar and other Harappan sites revealed the same pattern. A deep, uninterrupted genetic lineage stretching back at least 10,000 years. The implications were staggering. If this woman was representative of the broader Indus population, then the Indo-Aryan migration, long assumed to be the civilizational pivot point, may have arrived after the peak of the Indus Valley civilization, not before, or worse, not at all. Her mitochondrial haplogroup, M5, is one of the oldest in Asia, unique to South Asia, and absent from early steppe populations. Combined with Y-chromosome data from male skeletons across the region, a picture began to form. India's first great civilization was not built by outsiders, but by people already there. The Aryan narrative, long taught in textbooks, debated in parliaments and echoed in nationalist rhetoric, was beginning to unravel under the microscope. But if the Indus people weren't invaders or migrants, who were they? And what happened to them? Imagine it. Sprawling cities built with baked bricks, wide streets laid in perfect grid patterns, underground drainage systems more advanced than in many medieval towns. Over 5,000 years ago, the people of the Indus Valley were already building megacities like Dolavira and Mohenjo-Daro, trading across oceans and cultivating crops with precision. They spoke a language now lost, wrote symbols we still can't read, and lived in a complex society without kings or empires. But they weren't newcomers. They were the original architects of South Asia's civilization. The DNA tells us these weren't people who came from the West, but rather a synthesis of ancient local hunter-gatherers and the earliest farmers who had settled the region thousands of years earlier. They developed independently, absorbing influences from Mesopotamia and Central Asia, but never dominated by them. Then came the slow collapse, likely triggered by climate change. The once mighty Saraswati River dried up, Crops failed, populations migrated eastward. Over centuries, their cities faded into dust. But their genetic legacy didn't vanish. It lived on in the people of today. Modern Indians, especially from southern and tribal communities, carry large portions of this ancient Indus DNA. Their ancestors were not the conquered. They were the creators. This wasn't just a forgotten civilization. It was the cradle of India's identity, hidden in plain sight, encoded in blood. For centuries, myths and politics blurred the truth of India's origins. But science has spoken, quietly, powerfully, and irrevocably. The forbidden ancient DNA didn't just challenge colonial theories. 
it rewrote the very blueprint of a civilization. The Indus Valley people were not outsiders. They were indigenous, advanced, and enduring. Their legacy flows in the veins of millions today, waiting to be acknowledged, not as a lost civilization, but as the foundation of one of humanity's greatest cultural lineages. And yet, one question remains, why was this truth so long buried? Was it fear of shattering national myths? The discomfort of rewriting textbooks? Or is there still more hidden? More bones? More code? More truths lying dormant beneath layers of soil and silence? One fragment of DNA cracked the surface, but what else waits to be discovered beneath India's ancient ground? If you found this discovery as shocking as we did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore more secrets of the ancient world with us. Because sometimes, the past isn't past at all. It's alive, right beneath our feet.